I decided to add a hole for another set screw, so I first drilled a very small hole and then worked my way up to a number 7 drill bit. Number 7 is the right size for a quarter 20 tap. Of course I used a little cutting fluid, started slow, and then worked my way through until this was fully threaded to a quarter 20. After that I could add the quarter 20 set screw. Now also on the regional hole I reamed that out and tapped that for quarter 20 as well. So now what I'm doing is drilling the holes to mount the, the battery bracket to the frame here. Uh, just start with a small bit, work my way up, use a little cutting oil, and just go in all the way around. I just finished drilling this out. I got four bolt holes drilled through the frame. These are 5 16 so I can take a 5 16 bolt. So the bolt goes through the angle iron through the metal of the tractor comes out the bottom. I'll get some shorter bolts and matching uh, washers and nuts. I don't know what this bracket was originally used for, so I thought I'd remove it and then replace it with something a little bit more useful. So here I'm installing a new bracket. And that's going to be for an ABC rated fire extinguisher. The C on there, of course, being for electrical fires. So what I'd like to do on this tractor now is put some sort of a, uh, a disconnect, a power disconnect on it. And originally this tractor would have had a sort of a lever here that turns. And that's one of the many parts that was missing from this tractor. I do have a little bit different style disconnect, but unfortunately it will not work with that hole and I'd really have to do a lot of cutting uh, to make that fit. So I was thinking it might be better, I could maybe put this disconnect right about here. It's still within easy reach of the operator, uh, but I need to drill a hole through the side or something. But I was actually looking at this, and this is a accessory. It's actually an electric outlet that points down. So right up here, We've got that and I thought maybe I could just remove that, use that as the hole for the cables to come through and then mount the disconnect here. So what I'm going to do is uh, take that out, put it all off to the way, see if I can mount that disconnect. Tried pulling these bolts out but uh, they're kind of stripped and rusty so I'm just going to try cutting this instead. Probably just snap the other side right off. There we go. So now we got a good port to put our put our power through. Here is a hunk of the materials that I have to work with for cabling and doing all the power controls here. Uh, this is all essentially junk left over from previous projects. I've got some pretty good heavy duty cabling here though. Some of this stuff is uh, too aught. It's very nice thick heavy duty cabling, but still very flexible, lots of threads to it. And down here, uh, I'm definitely going to need a main fuse, so I do have at least a fuse holder. And digging around in this box, I did find uh, this one is in fact a 500 amp fuse. So I think that's the one that I'm going to uh, want to use for this project. But I'll have to figure out uh, what cables are going to go where, and all the main power is going to have to run through a main contactor to turn everything on and off. So I'll start working through the cable here. Typically for these uh, high current applications, we usually use a contactor as sort of a giant on-off switch for the entire system. Uh, this one is designed to run off of 12 volts. So right over here on my benchtop power supply, I've got it at 12 volts and I'm running the output um, over to the, uh, uh, the coil of the contactor, but I'm running it through a switch first. Uh, just to give you an example, so here Sophie is helping me out. So when we apply power to this, what happens Eight. is basically um, we're using an electromagnet to complete the circuit. So Sophie, if you could flip that switch. It's scary. Go ahead. And we see it snap shut. So right there we've got a great big powerful switch operated by a little teeny tiny switch. So I'll have a, an on off switch like that on the dashboard to power the entire system. And then probably coming off the back of this thing, um, I've already got right here, this was a shunt for current. So I'll be able 30. 
be able to hook up a big ammeter, see how much power I'm using. And then probably right off the other end, that might be a good spot for uh, a main fuse, or I might have that, uh, you know, maybe that's battery pack, fuse, and then to here, something like that. So that's the basics of how this is gonna work. I hope you're enjoying the project so far. Tune in next time when we'll keep working on it.